I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes as usual, and I'm going to break down Marvel's April solicitations and see just how hard Marvel plans on sticking it to small business owners. The Age of X-Men event, which started recently, will still be going strong, but April undoubtedly is headlined by the ginormous The War of the Realms event. I already released a video regarding the God Wheel promotional scheme Marvel will be running, but that just scratches the surface of the extent Marvel is using the event to prey on local comic shops. Milton Greep from ICV2.com penned a column titled Marvel Soliciting More Titles, More Number Ones, More Variants in response to concerns of direct market retailers. In it, he compared the February previews from 2019, 2018, and 2014. He found Marvel is soliciting 200% more first issues, 22% more variants, and 24% more total floppies in 2019 over 2018. Compared to 2014, Marvel is soliciting 38% more first issues, 27% more variants, and 29% more titles. This February, it's soliciting an average of more than one variant for every title it produces. Marvel's strategy is the opposite of DC's, which has reduced the number of titles it's soliciting by 36% and reduced the variants it's soliciting by over 40% from the same month a year ago. DC is soliciting roughly two variants for every three comics it produces. Marvel's number of variants, number one issues, and total books is absolutely staggering. Many of these inflated numbers are due to the War of the Realms event, launching in April. Issue 1 of War of the Realms solicited 16 variant covers by itself and carries a $6 cover price. Issue 2 also carries a premium price of $5 and 5 total variant covers. In all, War of the Realms will include 4 miniseries, 5 tie-in issues, 3 premium price issues, and a whopping 34 variant covers in April alone. Almost no Marvel reader will be able to avoid this event with tie-ins including Thor 12, Avengers 18, As Guardians of the Galaxy 8, Venom 13, and The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl 43. That's right, the book that customers who complain about get called man babies over, by industry professionals no less, because it's not intended for them. The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, complete with a half-ass Erica Henderson cover, is getting a tie-in issue with the War of the Realms event. The House of Ideas, my pasty white ass. More like the House of Scams and Tchotchkes. Don't worry, the scams aren't only related to this tentpole event. The Avengers No Road Home weekly miniseries will release its final three issues in April, culminating with, that's right, a premium priced issue number 10. Don't forget to include the Mighty Thor 3D issue, which features Jane Foster in the title role, includes 40 pages, and will come back with a pair of 3D glasses. All this for the sum of $8. Also, Marvel's Annotated, the 25th anniversary release of the classic Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross series, will be releasing issue 3 and cost a mere $8. Fans of the Spider-Verse might want to start saving their lunch money to prepare for April. The various incarnations of Spider-Man will star in or be heavily featured in 11 different titles, which includes 15 variant covers and 3 premium priced issues. It also appears that Donatello of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fame will be co-starring in the first issue of Symbiote Spider-Man. In addition to the normal Spidey series, the Web Slinger will be featured in a facsimile release of issue 252 by Roger Stern and Tom DeFalco, Marvel team-up with Miss Marvel herself, Spider-Man Deadpool, Marvel Comics Presents, and Spider-Man Life Story by Chip Zdarsky. You might not need a bank loan to keep up like the War of the Realms, but if you want to get your hands on all that Spidey goodness, it will take a bit of financial planning. The Age of X-Men event is still going strong into April. Six AOX miniseries issues will release, but only one variant cover is announced in solicitations and no premium priced issues. Maybe Marvel already blew their wad with the War of the Realms. Oh well, they're getting their pound of flesh out of the event rollout, and I imagine they'll take another Logan-sized slice off the back end as well. I would be remiss if I didn't point out this excellent cover by Raza from Age of X-Men Extremis, issue 3 by Leah Williams. I'll be honest, I've never heard of her, but it appears Psylocke and Blob taste the forbidden fruit of love in this passionate issue. Why is this not being released in 3D? Marvel is such a tease. 
Now, I will admit there is some cool shit being released that I'm interested in, but Marvel really makes it difficult even with these titles. Jim Starlin's Marvel Tales Thanos, an 80-page anthology collection of Starlin pen classics, goes for $8. The book will highlight Thanos' relationship with Gamora and include Warlock No. 10, Silver Surfer No. 45, and Warlock and the Infinity Watch No. 8. Rob Liefeld returns to Marvel with his newest creation, Major X, and writes both issues in April. He also does interior art in issue 1, so it's being priced up to $5. The bad boy of comics, who started an industry revolution, is now just another cog in Marvel's machine to suck as many pennies out of his fans as possible. Hot Shots issue 2, written by industry stain Gail Simone, is described as Six undercover, highly trained, armed to the teeth women are hunting a device from space that changes life as we know it. Wait! Who invited Wade? If anyone knows how to bring funny, it's good old Gale. See also Plastic Man from DC Comics. On second thought, I'm not interested in any more cat lady humor. Moving on. I'm a huge fan of anything related to Conan, and I've been reading the new Jason Aaron series, and Savage Sword of Conan, number one, releases this Wednesday. I thought they were overdoing it with a third series, Age of Conan. I was also confused why Teeny Howard would be writing such a high T character, but judging by the cover and description, they're just pasting Conan's name on the book. I won't have a hard decision skipping that series. One of the series from Marvel I really like is True Believers. For a buck each, you get classic reprints of older comics. I was especially excited by the Fantastic Four and Conan releases. Unfortunately, they're currently releasing Captain Marvel reprints, so I'm not buying those. After seeing the movie trailers and the repulsive behavior of Brie Larson, I'm on zero fucks for anything featuring that character in the foreseeable future. Marvel will begin releasing classic Star Wars issues in April, and I'm a bit confused why issues from 2015 and 2017 are being included. Sure, Charles Sewell's Darth Vader was the last Star Wars series worth reading, but surely there had to be some actual classics from the 80s and 90s that would have fit the True Believers label a bit better. Either way, I'm 100,000% confident that this Darth Vader one will be the best Star Wars comic released in April. If you're still wasting your time on the watered-down, terrible Star Wars books being released by Marvel, you deserve to be ripped off. On a positive note, of the 10 Star Wars series being released, only one is being written by Jody Hauser. I've been unfortunate enough to read multiple series by her, and she absolutely doesn't get Star Wars and shouldn't be creating any of it. The only decent book she's written is Thrawn, and that was an adaptation from Timothy Zahn, who created the character and has written numerous classic Star Wars novels. I will admit this Greg Smallwood cover from Star Wars Vader, Dark Visions No. 3, is intriguing. Perhaps Vader will finally be seduced by something other than the dark side. But... Marvel Star Wars is garbage, and I'm not going to chance my money that this won't suck as well. Obviously, I don't have time to give my thoughts on all 106 books Marvel is releasing in a very crowded April release schedule. But I identified most of the truly egregious scams they're pushing, and even a few books worth thinking about. The War of the Realms event really feels like Marvel taking their predatory schemes to a whole new level. There have been plenty of direct market retailers complaining and saying they're going to adjust their ordering based on Marvel's practices. This will probably be the first big opportunity for retailers to stand up to Marvel and tell them they're not interested in all the War of the Realms associated miniseries, tie-ins, and variant covers. April 2019 should indeed be an interesting month for Marvel. Of course, these are just my opinions. What say you? Is Marvel just trying to meet their customer demands? Are retailers and customers being too sensitive about their seeming triple down on everything they've been complaining about? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Poe. And I'm out.